going me on. Okay, I will start to show the demo. Uh, I have used the Brownie framework to set up the environment. Uh, this is a contracts folder and mobile app. The contract folder used to put the smart contract file and the build uh, this one the build folder used to uh, that holds some files after the smart contract is deployed and this one is a mobile uh, app folder that you do to put the uh, mobile app Code, code file, this one. I'll start from the contract. This is my contract code. Uh, we'll define the uh, the variables here the driver and the employer and some terms, salary amount, reward amount and penalty amount. Uh, it's a function that used to evaluate the driver. And this, this is a code. This is the driver and the employer address or account and uh, to deploy this uh, contract file as uh, the script and this one is the, uh, the code to deploy the contract file and This one is the app, the mobile app. Uh, mm, I have used the Kiwi open source software to develop the mobile app. And I can try. Okay, for some reason, I can't open the mobile app, but I have a screenshot. This is the screenshot that uh, we will 
put the latitude and longitude and uh, timestamp from this and uh, we uh, that evaluates the driver and uh, response the the result but the result where uh, uh, says no no enough enough fund for the uh, gas that is <laughs> thank you but um but what about didn't you so you were running on test tonight right yes That's so you could you could you could just generate funds right just simply by going and like there are sites that can give you funds like in test tonight okay the, the, the test file also says there is no enough fund mm -hmm. it can't mm. okay so like what what were you able to do like just if you said because it, it was disconnected i think i can see you have done something good but you didn't present it you didn't sell it if i were your employer then i would be like okay and if i'm technical i know what you've done probably if i'm not technical i feel that you haven't done anything you know it's like so presentation is all about selling what you have done in a good way and you are now we are getting close to the end and without that it's very hard to convince people you have done something very you know you know what you're doing so it's it's good you have done the work but you know don't get distracted because something doesn't work on on when you demo you know i think you've done good for example just you go and show the screenshot but you didn't describe it so that shows some frustration and as if like it's not your work right so this is key now you master like how to control the, the narrative right so in your head it must be organized what exactly what you have done you have a mobile app you have a back end you have a front end and you have to talk to like you have to tell it as if this is you know i don't know what are you interested in, like as if this is the best thing that has been done right not like as if you know here it is here it is judge, judge it you don't let people judge it you 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 give them what to judge because I think you have done the work. Like the hard part is done. So now the real, the selling part, I, I don't, I'm not seeing it. So can you repeat again, just if you could, if you understand and, or if you want to try to really present it in its, in its glory? Okay. Uh, which part? I mean, just sell it to me or sell it to everyone, what you've done. So it's not about just, okay, the code, if it doesn't work don't try it again just it's fine but just using the screenshots what you have done you know kind of tell us how it works you know what it's supposed to do and how it works okay. first I, I i write the code uh, the smart contractor like this and uh, after uh, putting the smart contract code uh, uh I, I have done the the I I I, I wrote the deployed code the deployment code from this and uh, then uh, after writing the, the the deployment code run the uh, brownie de deployment and then uh, i wrote the the application code all the uh, screenshots here This crunch when uh, I, I, I installing the brownie, and this is 
when I uh, after the code, the the code, uh, the smart code writing, uh, Brownie compiled, and uh, I got this screen result and screenshot. And after the uh, when I create the, this is when I create the um, meta mask address for the employer end the driver. This one is also. Okay, this is a uh, compile file. This one is when I deploy the, the smart contract. And this is uh, when I was trying to the, uh, send the, the um, it, it tar from the driver to the uh, from the employer to the driver. This one is also from the uh, remix. I was trying to send from the remix. And this one also, uh, the app that was displayed. And uh, we will uh, put the latitude from this end, we'll put the longitude from this end, timestamp after after that, value it driver. That's the value driver and we we can uh, get the response. This is all about I have Good. yeah I think you have to work on your present is a lot yeah yeah you have to work on your presentation skills because you know, hard work cannot itself sell. And it's this is not for Meron as well, but for everyone. It's just the two things you have to be, you know, it's like you can be a good cook and if you don't sell it, serve it, and other people eat it, then it doesn't matter, right? So for that reason, um, you have to work hard as well just to really learn how to present um, in a good way your work, like in a flow manner. and learn from people, watch YouTubes, um, to see how people present and what, what do they think. Normally, it's the preparation. If you had prepared, like if you, everyone, if they, if you come prepared like 30 minutes before, if you have thought, what am I going to present and how, you know, which work is important, watch. If you think 30 minutes before what to present, then it would get easier. Like instead of coming and then you are asked and you're like, you don't know actually what you are presenting, you know, the code is here and there. It gets very harder. So, Meron, thanks for willing just actually to go and present even as, as you get called. But it's important to prepare 30 minutes before all the time, everywhere you go. If your work is probably you will be asked to present your work. So, this is just a general advice for everyone. But thanks, Meron. Okay, so, um, uh, yeah, yeah, do you want to proceed? Yeah, yeah. Go. Let me share. Oh, Meron, could you please yeah. stop sharing? Yep. Can you see my screen? Yes, we do. All right. Uh, good morning again. Uh, so, uh the, the the first thing that uh, i did was to write the uh, a contract and after that i uh, uh developed a web app for the a company and uh, later uh i tried to develop the mobile app for the drivers but uh, i have some difficulties it, it, it's not working properly so the uh, I used a uh, Sardwave uh, framework uh, that will allow us to write the uh, contracts uh, and also uh, develop the web, the web and the mobile applications. So uh, this is the, the, the contract, right? Uh, we will have uh, address for the company, the driver, uh, and the device. 
but I haven't used this one uh, because we, we, we need the transfer between the driver and the company. And we also have uh, uh, checkpoints that the company will uh, enter from the, the front end, from the web app. And depending on uh, where the drivers uh, are, uh, it will calculate or check the compliance and non-compliance. So this is the constructor that will be set uh, during deploying the, um, where is it? Uh, deploying the contract. So th there's th this is th this is the contract that has been uh, deployed in Subway, and it has an address and also a testnet uh, network that will be used in the mobile and in the uh, web app to connect to uh, the the front end. So uh, we have a function called add checkpoint and also checkpoint um, get checkpoint remove checkpoint and also ingest the uh, latitude longitude and the, the range and also the timestamp uh, and this this will uh, along with this function it will check the non compliance or compliance and then it will update the the status the status being uh, created and in transit and uh, completed so when the status uh, is completed, it will uh, transfer the um, the fund to uh, the driver, depending on his performance. So that if it is like greater than uh, seventy five percent, it will transfer the whole balance. That's zero point zero zero five ether. Uh, if it's uh, like between seventy five. And 50%, it uh, it will transfer 0 0.3, 0 0.03 ether. At the same time, the the 0.02 will be refunded back to the the company. Uh, so that's that's the smart contract. And for the for the wave up, uh, maybe I should demonstrate this one. But still, it has a, a problem. Uh, I think, yeah. Uh, local there. Uh, okay. Let me just copy this. Oops, sorry. I could just localhost three thousand. Yeah. So this is uh, for for the for the company to add the the checkpoints. Uh, they they might there might be multiple uh, checkpoints. So uh, we simply add the the checkpoints, which is the latitude, uh, longitude, uh, diameter or range, and uh, the timestamp. But uh, somehow, when I try to get back the data, it's giving me some kind of hexadecimal or uh, saying it's a big number kind. So for, for uh, just demonstration, I will, I will just use demi data. Uh, I don't know, 200. Uh, this has to be like a big number. Uh, this, I, I don't know what, what's happening behind. Maybe it's during the uh, deployment or the during the compilation uh, I will I only get back this the the, the timestamp rather this uh, are returned as none so if I add checkpoints um, it will instantiate the metamask for confirmation this has to be the uh, wallet address of the company uh, so we confirm uh, during the deployment uh, we we gave uh, what we call it uh, the the addresses to the yeah so no. so this is this is the the, the problem I got.
on the latitude longitude it, it's not getting back the the checkpoints and that the timestamp is fine but yeah uh, after that this data uh, will alert the the drivers uh, to um, to check in so for that uh, we we have the the mobile app uh, this one also is still it's not uh, running not not running but it's also not connecting to the uh, the wallet yeah uh, i think that's that's all i have any questions any suggestions come yeah yep no okay, okay. so that's good then um so the part is that you were you didn't have time to finish to complete but i mean these things was that debugging issue you know or is yes. it the matter of time uh, uh it, it, it's it's pause i guess uh the, the the problem is uh where is my component when i get the the list of checkpoints uh this checkpoint latitude uh, the, it, it, it's giving me um, uh, a hexadecimal number. I try to parse it, uh, but still it's it's not uh, working. Uh, if this was solved, then uh, it, it should work. Yeah, I guess it's a bug or, a, uh, yeah, not a bug. Uh, yeah. And the, the, uh, the, the, the good thing about Sardwave is uh, we don't need to uh, add uh, function. Uh, we have to say kind of emit, right? We, we, we say emit this function. And then in the, the front end, we uh, call events. But that, that has been, hand, I mean, uh, handled by the a third wave you just have to call the uh, the, the function uh, like this one uh, using the contract ad address uh, you can call uh, the the uh, gate function directly yeah so maybe i think uh, the, the the problem is during the, the the compilation but i have checked it on the remix it works but when I try to deploy it, uh, it, it returns back some hexadecimals. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think that's, that's to check. So the, but the flow would be that you now, this is just the, the, the checkpoint you told us is to set a target and then Ye they will start, yes. they will start from the mobile app. They will start sending the, their coordinates and timestamp and then yes. it calculates the uh, um, okay validity and then when it happens according to the time step what is supposed to be so the time step at the checkpoint is it around oh, this, how long like, I mean, because you didn't specify, yeah, uh, you didn't specify uh, what it is yeah uh for example the the the, the they they need to check in like uh in three minutes time interval, right? The, the final destination will be also set it up, right? So that's the time. Okay. So this, the, this, the time st this example, time stamp is? For example, the, what the is first this time stamp? Point, the one that... uh, th this is the, 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 the uh, at the beginning, for example, when we start, uh, it might be like at 8 a.m., right? That's the first checkpoint at that instance of time. Uh, okay, has so to be. Your, I'm getting confused. I, I'm, so explain because it's a very different thing. What uh, you're using checkpoint everywhere. So what is this for this point? So this is the the company is setting. What is it yes. setting? Is it the goal, a target? Is it the duration? What what is it? What is this this time? What is this point being set up? It's the current time. Uh, oh for what this is i mean that the latitude the longitude will be the the the, the checkpoint that can be the the final for destination what? if, if we have 
So check, if we check, have... checkpoint, don't say checkpoint. Just okay. don't say checkpoint, just use another word. What is it? Uh, is it a goal? Is it a target? What is it? Or is it yes, um, it's a, a telemetry? It, okay. it's, a, it's a target. So it's a target uh, or to reach. telemetry data for the, for the drivers. Right. Yeah. This so is, for the for drivers example, to go. If we, if we don't have a, a checkpoint between the uh, uh, now and the, the, the destination, we, we, we can set this to be the, if it's the final destination, we will use the latitude and longitude of the, the destination and the range that they need to be uh, in that time stand. Okay, so this point that you are setting is a, a target, the drivers to go. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, and then the drivers from their mobile app then mm -hmm. will be sending um, events that illustrates that they are they have arrived or they have reached. Um, or they are in the in the range. Yeah, so what I mean is, so somewhere yeah. along the line, yeah. or when they get mm -hmm. closer, they would just say that I have arrived. So they would say, yeah. okay. And and then based on that, it's calculated. So it's a one point, it's not a route, it's a one point sending. So the target is a one point, and then mm -hmm. also the driver send one point. Uh, okay. Yes, if if we don't have... Okay, a, so you don't sorry, seem confident. So that, that, that yeah. either it's because of there is a delay but you don't seem confident that usually is means uh, it's important to be if you are not confident you just have to explain it because people sense that like you know do you actually have you thought about it you know so that, I, i'm the reason i'm asking is exactly are you confident what it is like what it is this one and what is requiring and so that you are very clear you know what you are trying to show so now maybe there is a delay so that's next time also a problem. Comes, uh until the the destination so for example uh if uh, a checkpoint like 15 minutes before uh, the, the uh, nine, that's the 8.45. Okay, good. Um, is it my connection or should I change my connection or is it a yes connection? Sir uh, Rodas, what, what do you hear the delay from? I think it was a yes connection. We lost them for a bit. Oh. So this this the what I call Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think there is a delay, so it's very hard to communicate. So but good, let's stop it there. Well, finally you can go next. Okay. Hi Rodas. Hi everyone. Uh and good morning Hi. everyone. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you hear us, you can stop the presentation. There is a quite a huge delay. Yeah, yeah so uh, I think that the emulator. Okay, let me use it. Sorry. Uh, should I continue? Or? I think the, let, let him stop the presentation so that we have a clarity. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, you can hear me, right? Yeah, we can hear you. 
Okay, let me finish my screen. Uh, can you see it? Yep, it's coming. Yeah, go on. Okay, uh, you can see it, right? Yes, we so, can see it. Okay, so I published a Medium link for this project, and I'm going to go over a few things about it, and then I'm going to demonstrate what I did in the project and also show you them. So what I wanted for this article to be is like, since I, I think I did a bit different, I used uh, a Java library to connect with the smart contract and also for several deploy it. So uh, what I tried to do was, you know, try to demonstrate how I integrated this library with Android application and how I used it. So uh, for this project, I didn't deploy it in a test net. I, I did it in a private network, I used Gunache. So let me go over the article. So in this article, what I was trying to do was, I was trying to create a smart contract using the Ethereum blockchain and for the local network, I was using Gunache. So to go over what the smart contract will do, the smart contract is gonna have, is gonna do, so, when I created the smart contract, the scenario was there will be an employer that will create some parameters with the smart contract. Uh, those parameters will include the location for the driver to be and the end timestamp of how long the driver should wait for that location. Uh, and some sort of Ethereum to be passed to the contract so that whenever the driver is compliant with the parameters, the contract will send it to the driver's account. So that's what I was trying to do. So to accomplish this, to write the contract, I used Solidity programming language. Uh, I wrote some introductions about it and also added a link to it. Uh, I used Truffle. So first I, I tried to use Truffle to write the contract and also to deploy it in Ganache. But since I started using the Web3 Java library, I started using Truffle and tried to communicate with the smart contract using this library. So what I did is I tried to also explain the Gnache library and also added a link to it and also for the Web3 library. And after that, I tried to explain what the contract does. So the first thing the contract does is when the driver or I mean the employee employer is trying to add a parameter to it, since it is based on some ethers to be transferred to the driver, the first time the employer will transfer some ethers to the contract by using this function. And also we will call this third delivery session, which the employer will set the parameter. So he will set the address, which is the driver's address, so this is some specific device. Uh, it will also set the latitude and longitude of the location. It will set the initial payment in V, which is, uh, it, it is, uh, uh, it's sort of an Ethereum, but it is another uh, uh, type of uh, payment. So it will set the initial payment fee and also the incentive the incentive is for if that when the driver checks for this contract he will send this location in the given interval so whenever he sends the first time it will give him the initial payment ethereum and in the intervals after that when he calls the contract he will give him the incentive fee i'll try to explain it in the project you will get more understanding about that so the first thing the employer will do is start the delivery session. So you set the parameters and add this struct model. So I created a mapping and it will add it to that mapping. So after this, we are gonna assume that a delivery session is ongoing. So next time when the driver is checking, we will check if the delivery session is ongoing. So what he calls is, uh this works so this one what it does is it will take him an 
an address for the account and it will check if the markings has an ongoing uh, delivery. If it has, it will send it back. And uh, if the driver knows that there is a delivery, it will start checking for uh, the delivery session. So it will go to this function. What this function is done is the it will take in the longitude and latitude and the address. So we will get the object reference for the address, the abstract object that I created. So the first thing we check is if it is first time uh, checking this function, the pay amount will be the first initial payment. But if it is a uh, consecutive uh, course, we will set it to the initiative date. So the first thing we're going to do is check if the contrast has balanced. If it doesn't, we will close the session and it will set the compliance to force and the ongoing part will be, so the delivery session will end. So the second thing you're going to check is the time. If the current time is less than the end time, uh, it will go into checking the distance. And if the distance is also in the range of the location, it will transfer some interest to, uh, to the, no, okay, this one is uh, this one. So what it does is it will transfer some ether to the driver's address and it also increase the pay count and it will update the mapping. Uh, this is some return statement that I uh, wrote so that the client application can access it. So there are three conditions about this. The, the first scenario is the driver is in range and also within the given time. So the contract will transfer what the allocated Ethereum to the driver. The second scenario is the driver is out of time. So it will come to this. In this time, not, no Ether will be transferred to the driver, but the balance of the contract will be transferred back to the owner. So the delivery won't happen in that case. The, the third scenario is, the first time when the driver checks this contract, there will be a transfer Ethereum for it. But if the driver goes out of range, then the delivery will end and the remaining balances will be transferred back to the owner. So that's what I try to do with this contract. Uh, after that, I try to show the implementation of the library that I used in the Android project and how to integrate it and how to uh, get a wrapper Java class from the contract. Uh, next thing I did is how to explain, try to explain what the contract does, the, the procedures that I was speaking about. Uh, and then I showed how the driver, I mean, the employer sets up a new drive delivery sessions and I tried to show the UI for that. Uh, and then I explained the conditions for it, which I said, like the initial payment and the incentive payment and the couple of scenarios about the failure of the delivery session. And also if it is compliant and how the transfer will happen. And in conclusion that I stated that there I get to work with the, another external library integrated with the smart contract and that I use Tikunache and prefer to deploy the contract and I also linked my GitHub link to it. So next thing I'm gonna show you is the project. So yeah, maybe uh, maybe instead of the project, can you go to the demo just so that in the interest of time uh, okay. we can see how all you know they fit together. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, so I have two devices running. One is for the employer and the other is for uh, uh, the driver. Uh, okay. Okay. So this is the login screen. So uh, uh, for this, uh, okay, maybe the name of the issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me use the other emulator. So this is the login screen. Uh, just to check for the IP of the Ganache uh, server. Uh, it's by default localhost and the port is this. I'm already connected, but if you wanted to connect, you press this 
Then after that, what I did was Ganache by default will create 10 accounts. So I used the first one as the admin account and the rest for the employee accounts. So when I try to log into the admin account, I will show you this. Then I select uh, admin. So if I'm logged in as the admin, it will show me the screen. It will show me the current amount of. Can you increase screen. slightly? Can you increase slightly the? The monitor. Uh, you can see. Uh, no, it's it, like just the screen. If it's possible, if not, just it's fine. It's uh, yeah. yeah, that's good. Okay, so uh, it has uh, the current amount of. I mean, the current balance of the account, and it will show you the history of the already created, and if it is complied. It will show you as true as the it's not complete, it will show you as false. It will also show you the in time of the contract. Uh, this one could have been the totalitarian pass to it, but I'm showing the incentive and also the delivery session name. So as an admin, it will issue a new delivery. So uh, sorry, is this because it's soon? Yeah, no, it's fine. I, I think that, that's fine. You can continue with that. Okay. So I will say new delivery. For employee one, and I will choose the employee address. And I will choose the in time. So to show you the compliance of it, I'm going to set the time to be more. So we can go with this one. Let's say for noon, 10 after noon. Then you will also select the location. Go with that distance, let's say 50. Then shard pay would be to Ethereum and incentive would be to. So there is a new delivery. So we'll say it will create a new delivery. So the transaction count will be a new one. You can see the Ganache UI, right? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Okay. So the contract is this. So 10 Ethereum will be passed to it the first time. And as you can see, uh, the history for the the ones I created before, but so the contract has 10 Ethereum. So uh, this works. Let me open up the employee with another device. For the first time, you say connect and it's connect. Let's choose employee one. So employee has also the delivery history, but it's only showing the ones that are uh, directed to it, that are assigned to the address. So the first thing you will do is check. Uh, sorry about the UI, but I was doing uh, a new thing and it didn't work out well, but less, this appears when there is a delivery happening for this specific account. So you will say start. Mm. Okay, I think this one is not updated. Let me go back and check for employee with this one. So uh, it will show the delivery name, the distance it is allowed, and also the location. I mean, I could do better in showing the location and also the incentive pay. So after it starts, it will start checking with the contract. So you'll see the transactions increase here. So it's checking every 10 seconds for the contract. So you see that the transaction is increasing what, here. What does it checking? So is it checking to? Yeah. It's checking for compliance, like if it is in the okay. specified location okay. and in range. So you in want case, it to test it in such a way that it's faster, like that it checks quickly, like every 10 seconds? Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. But the uh, distance parameter is supposed to be set by the contract, so it's supposed to get it. Okay. But for this demo, I chose. Uh, so you'll see that the contract uh, Ethereum is uh, decreasing. Then, as you can see, the uh, driver's account is 144. So it, it, I think 10 Ethereum is supposed to be passed back to the driver. So if I say. If the compliance happens, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the compliance happens. Uh, so as you okay. can see, balance is zero, which means, so uh, this is one scenario, like if it is in compliance, but 
uh, if I wanted to, so, yeah, there so, are so where, where, do, where does the, the, like where the employees sees like they are actually in, com, you know, in compliance that, that it's transferring to them? Is it, where, do they see it? Uh, I, mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, so if I show you the contract, like, uh, Solidity is very difficult to work with. Like the return statements, I mean, I try to use events, but uh, trying to get the event parameters in the with the 3J library was difficult. So as you can see, like this, uh, the return statement is also like some custom thing that I create. So for the first one, like I check if the contract is ongoing, and if the parameter that is checking is distance or not. And if it is end, if it is if it is an end of the contract, is a compliant or not? Like this is what I'm checking. So when the employee starts, so, so, yeah. So when what they see is then their money is increasing, that means they're comp. That's yeah, also compliant, another one. Yeah. Okay. So the idea so because is because like, they expect how much they are gonna get, and if they are getting that money, then they know that. I mean, I'm just more seeing where is their you know, where do they see something is happening positive or negative? It's in their money. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the, the money increased at the end uh, after the contract ended. So uh, with this scenario, the money will be transferred as long as they're in compliance till the time ends. Like if they started the, the compliance and some money is transferred, they're still in compliance, but they might yeah, not. Yeah, I understand. I'm just my poor. Like, they see it because it's a confirmation. It's a confirmation. You, you open your account and then you see that money is increased. Therefore, you know, there is no error. So that means there's no issue. Yeah. So normally, okay, so good. Uh, so cool. like, let me show you one scenario where the issue might fail, but they might still be in compliance because the first time they were in that. Uh... I mean, what I mean is, what is this history that you're showing? I think maybe you are answering a different question. Like what oh, is the history I, this versus what is every time, like every 10 second you send, you see something. So what is the difference between the two? That's what I mean. Oh, so this history is for uh, ended contracts. I mean, okay. ended delivery sessions. So yeah. let's say- so For this, employer, a new, a new one has happened because now the time has finished. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So the, um, so I have a list of delivery history, like uh, a new delivery session is uh, added here once the contract uh, parameter end, like either it ended because of the non-compliance with the distance or balance of the contract has, you know, ended, I mean, is zero or the time has passed. So yeah. these are the three scenarios that I created. So yeah. it is in compliance till the balance is zero it will send data back to the address. And if it is non-compliant, it will send the Ethereum back to the address. So that's what I was trying to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Sure. No, that's, that's, yeah. Go on. Just, uh, is there anything you want I mean, to show? I don't want to take time, but I could also show you the scenarios where the compliance is not viable. Or okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 And you, what is that? Just maybe instead of showing, what happens there? So there are two scenarios. One is uh, the driver arrives at the location and is compliant for some time. But if the if he gets out of the range, uh, the compliance will end and the interior will not be transferred to him. Like yeah. that's why I created uh, two uh, Ethereum variables. So the initial payment is when he gets to the location and receives the initial payment, and the incentive pays for the interval that he stays there. Yeah. So if it, in the middle he leaves, the compliance will fail. But and then, then it doesn't open. arrive. Yeah, if it doesn't arrive in time, it also will be non-compliance and the balance will be transferred back to the, to the owner. Yeah. yeah so that's okay. what the, Excellent. This is really super. So well done. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, good that you demonstrated your skill in a good, in, from design to you know, presentation. I think that's that's a good one. Yeah, I mean, I was going for something that uh, is going to be used, you know? Yeah, so that... no, th this is good. This is exactly, you can convince now people 
with this exactly because of you know the, the quality of the design as well as also the quality of just how things work the different cases that that is handled so uh, this is excellent thank you okay. Great, and I think we have we're running out of time, but just and also my my laptop is running and but uh, electricity is not here, so I have to move. Um, but we have one person maybe who is willing to to share. Yeah, Abdul Hamid. Yeah, so I won't be taking that much time since yeah. I have the recording of the demo. I will start sharing my screen. <clears throat> Is my screen visible? Yes. Okay, so this is the recording that I uh, created. So here we have the admin dashboard, and the admin dashboard would be creating um, checkpoints. So just to define what a checkpoint is, a checkpoint has a latitude, a longitude. Uh, it is uh, like the coordinate on a map, and then a distance. The distance would uh, be useful in measuring like how far should a uh, can a driver be from this uh, other checkpoint in the timestamp? The timestamp is useful for uh, like at what at what time should the driver pass this checkpoint? So these are the parameters, and we'll be adding such such checkpoints four times. So as we can see here, it's adding the first checkpoint. So this once this is complete. <clears throat> The same, we will be doing the same thing four times to add the, the remaining four checkpoints. So it has been completed. So I have passed uh, adding the remaining checkpoints and now... So, so uh, again, just to understand, the checkpoint you mean is the ones that are uh, destinations? Yeah, like what there's... Is, a, I, I, what is because checkpoint is a very confusing word. So what, what yeah. do you mean by checkpoint? Is it a target uh, or is it something else? So a certain a certain num uh, number of pins on the map that the driver yes. would need to pass. So for example, if he's going from uh, Bole to Piazza, like yeah. it should pass to uh, Bole, then uh, one loss in like that. So those exactly. are the checkpoints. They, they are targets. So within so yeah. there is a target within. So because you are now a route, the target is a route. Therefore, you have yes. like multiple check like multiple points or multiple pins within that uh, pass. Okay, so they are targets. Yes. Okay. So here we have the four checkpoints added. So next would be uh, the going to the mobile app. So I, it will be continued to that. So this is the mobile app for the driver. Yeah. It will click on start delivery and it will load them up. So we have a certain uh, route already set and that route pass through the checkpoints we defined. So these are the four checkpoints, as you can see here. The these red pin, red pins are the checkpoints. So the driver is moving uh, through that. And are you same, simulating that? What is? What are we? Okay, you're simulating it. Oh, here, here you can see the simulation. So I have, um, I have set already the path, the route, and I I, I clicked on start start route. So or oh, play route, yeah, play route. Okay. So once I click on play route, it starts to move. So uh, we can simulate it like as the driver is moving. Yeah. So it's passing through this route and it's it's passing through the checkpoints as well. And it will be then sending uh, this data to the smart contract. And the smart contract would be checking if the, uh, if the checkpoint is being passed at the right time and within the specified distance. So here I'm refreshing to check if there are any number of compliances and non-compliances. So for this case, we'll, we'll be having uh, one non-compliance and the remaining will be compliances. Uh, the reason the first checkpoint has uh, has been like added as a non-compliance is because the driver wasn't able to start uh, at the specified timestamp. So he was late. So since he was late, the checkpoint has been recorded as a non-compliance. So here we can see the number of compliances and the non-compliances. So the checkpoint have been in compliance and checkpoint isn't in compliance. So here I'm trying to show the balance of the uh, driver. So 0 0.1907. So once the admin clicks on complete delivery, 
it would then uh, send the balance that's in the smart contracts to the driver and you can see the driver's uh, account but, but why like in this case that's the one point the driver is in like the employer uh, so yeah. is that the driver who's uh, completing no it's admin the admin is the one that will be completing like last time when we had the discussion there was uh, like uh, maybe adding a cron job or doing some some logic so i came up with the admin no, but in this case in this case the dri the, uh, the driver should complete in a way that the only reason why i'm saying is that because now the money belongs to the the, the uh, employer right and the employer once it's delivered they might say oh okay you're delivered I, i'm not going to complete and i'm going to keep it you know so instead of that if the driver actually just completes it makes sense right because that's they are the ones like the contract should state that when the driver delivers that if everything is in compliant the driver is able to get the money yeah. and and so just to give that equal power that means you know trustlessness because this in this case the driver must trust now the employer yeah, yeah so yeah. to remove that yeah it's just changing who completes it's like if the driver completes then it, it makes sense yes yes i basically chose the easy pass out uh, uh, since yeah. uh, the, the time was a bit uh, a bit uh, low i'm running i was running out of time so that was the reason you said like yeah. no no but this, this is good that. this is good i'm just saying yeah i think it's just a matter of um, reversing who completes but otherwise it's excellent so okay. once once the complete has been clicked it will then transfer the balance that is uh, on the smart contracts to the driver and uh, we can see that at the end since the driver's account would add up a certain amount like 0 0.1957 it was 0 0.190 something so yeah. this is what i did so Excellent. this is the, so yeah w what was the simulator what what uh, framework or what is is that a google map or oh it's, it's uh, it is android uh, simulator and here we can like location we can go to settings here when you click okay. this then inside locations we can then set a route a certain route that we want the device to move on so here i have selected two routes and once i click on play route it will then start to simulate the device moving on this route and then when it does that it is a meeting also an event because how, how do you connect you know like uh, on each of them to also a meet event right so it has to send it to the smart contract the, its yeah. location okay so i used a package uh, i used flutter to develop to develop this app and yeah. inside flutter there is a geolocator uh, package and i use okay. that so each time when the location... even from the simulator it can then access yeah. the, so, the okay. coordinates yes so here i, I think yeah that one is really excellent and i think in combination um with just the designs i think you know the two components together can really now you can make a case for very sensitive packages for banks i think there's a certain interest you know you, you guys could take this one further so this is excellent yeah uh, one maybe uh, like i i i thought of this device as being tamper proof but like it's very easy to change this uh, gps coordinate like i I, sh I showed you right now uh, there is also an app that we can install on the physical devices and it does the same thing as this it can like uh, uh change the gps units of the device and any app any other app that's trying to listen to those gps coordinates will be getting the tampered uh, gps so maybe having a separate device yeah. that is really tamper proof would, uh, would really help in this case yeah but but i'm imagining there is a simulation versus so when it is simulating it's very different from when it's actually the device right in a way that the device has a device id like the gps device id while this one is actually just um, a code and it's, it doesn't have the device id the gps device id so you could simply also just attribute it with the gp you know the gps cannot measure what you a simulation uh, so every yeah. 
every mm -hmm. instrument, every IoT has its ID. So as yeah. long as you allow it to send that, in principle, that should be fine. But that's a yeah. good point um, to at least that's, let's say, security. That one has to make sure, you know, without informing anyone, know exactly the, the GPS sensor ID. And it should be sent together um, in addition to the, just the, G, the, the longitude and latitude. It must that's send as well. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good yeah. point. So, Wonderful. This is excellent, right. guys. I think really well done. I think every attempt, you know, all of you, Meron, uh, Yaya, Panuel, and um, uh, Abdul Hamid, I think this is really excellent. And you can think further, uh, especially after the the finishing, you could think if there are other you know places where they can be interested. And I think there are many, especially, as I said, for very sensitive deliveries, this is key where two parties that we you know one the, the deliverer is also not just a normal driver but a company and then um the actual the employee in this case would be also another one with sensitive material to be delivered and these things can be can be used um in that scenarios and that's good so well demonstrated okay so um if there are others like who would uh, want maybe just you could give us your name and then we can also just have maybe not in the stand up, but I will be able to uh, sit, have arrange a call or a meeting like this so that you can present to us to the team. Um, but otherwise, I think this is excellent demonstration. I think it demonstrates the ability to, to understand the business objective as well as to deliver at different qualities, but very, um, you know, the hard work is visible to say, uh, to see. So wonderful. Okay. So then let's stop here. Uh, this part and then um, there will be a tutorial but as I said my battery will die if I start so let's delay it in 20 minutes 